I give you guys a heads up with that as, as well. Um, how do we meet each other? We met through um, Osh, always connecting people. <laughs> Shara's husband, one of his, uh, his, his old school beautiful cars yes. that Osh uses. But what I want to talk to you guys about today is, uh, you know, in, in my, she's a very special uh, guest and, you know, so much. Um, first of all, she's got a, a book that's coming out, going to be coming out. We should get it in there. Am I, am I recording on here too? Yep. Uh, our light's so good, we got too much. I know, right? Our light. <laughs> but uh, but well, I can tell you, I can tell it to you. It's coming out in November, right? So November eighth. Black, brown, and political. political. Get in, get informed, get empowered, and change the game. Um, I love the the title. Uh, first off, anybody who's trying to write a book, I, I can only guess. At the hardest part, probably, right? Mm -hmm. Is do you pick the title first or you pick the title last? Last. Right? Yes. That would make sense. That makes sense. Yeah. So what made you come up uh, uh, with that? Because there's so much more to the book than there is to the title, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then you're always in that fearful of, is it going to lead people away? Yeah. <laughs> or is it going to bring people exactly. in? Yeah. Um, what made you uh, choose that? Were you doing the... The Kim Crash and Miley Cyrus. Let me know some a little controversial. It's like a real yes. people in, right? <laughs> yeah. In a way, yes. I, I, people I, like yes. crazy <laughs> controversial stuff. Yeah, apparently. yeah. In a way, I, that's what I did because at first it was, I wanted to name it uh, "People of Color Building Political Power." Okay. Um, but then my book coach and and uh, um, yeah, my book consultant. They have those. Yes, book, book coaches. Yes, book coach <laughs> consultant. She helped me do everything. I would need she, one. She, you know, she did searches on it, and she was like, "Oh, that title is not good enough." And I just said, "Well, what about this?" Because th right. actually, I was going to start a Facebook group called this. Okay, interesting. Yeah, so that I've had this name in my head for something. I just didn't know. Okay. And then you know, she was like, "Well, who's your target? Like, what's your tar who's your target audience?" audience? And yeah. I said. Black and brown people. <laughs> right. I said okay. because because I'm this is my passion is getting uh, black and brown people in, engaged civically. So I'm with Chandra Lopez Brooks. So we know where the black comes from. The brown. Am I brown? I'm mean, Indian. <laughs> I'm bubbling Asian on SATs. In the UK, they call us brown. I don't know what, what I am, but you, but Lopez, mm -hmm. uh, where was the, the heritage from, for those who might not know? Latina, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so, yeah, um, Mexican and Puerto Rican and, you know, all these mixtures of so many things. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. And for those uh, people who are wondering, uh, aside from your friends, you're attacking this, is this, okay, who the heck is uh, Chandra uh, Brooks? So, currently, you're commissioner mm -hmm. on, your vice chair. Vice uh, I, I'm not vice chair anymore, okay. um, but I am commissioner. I was vice chair, formerly vice chair of the Commission on Status of Women, mm -hmm. and also um, I am the co-chair of the uh, Justice and Advocacy Committee on that commission. Yeah, she's way too humble, but just numerous awards and so forth. Uh, what a uh, Eastside Union High School District Hall of Famer, shout out, in 2015. Yes. We got Vice Mayor is going to be this year in, in November. We are just talking about that, Dr. Marco Sanchez. Mm -hmm. He's been on the show, Gilroy High School Principal. Um, uh, how was uh, that for you? First of all, what high school? Oh, Grove. Oh, Grove. <laughs> oh, Grove High School. That's how you know Osh, too, yes, right? Yes, Were you guys same year or anything? Well, no, no, no. I don't know Osh from high oh, school. Huge. I know Osh from community okay. and politics, but not from high school. But I know he graduated from high school. He's just a little, slight, a little older than me. I was going to say, I, I was going to do the opposite and be like, oh, no, he's much younger than us, so we don't know. <laughs> right. That's what Osh, just a Osh would, younger would younger. like. But um, <laughs> let's dive into it. So okay. Chandra hyphen Brooks, mm -hmm. not... Uh, this other Chandra there, but yeah. at the end of the day, I would say is how can we give Paul's on here? The Vrinda is watching. Bring them on camera. Um, what value can we give to these guys and give them an insight and reason to you know really check out the book? The book's not out yet. It's out in mm -hmm. uh, November. Uh, Mr. Brooks, he's gonna he's gonna love uh, this. Um, you know, I loved. Uh, I want to take a deep dive into the book a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, one thing you said was to really uh, spark the MLK in the Cesar Chavez um, inside of you. Mm -hmm. First off, just talking about uh, women uh, in general. Um, let's go to another thing. If you want to start a nonprofit mm -hmm. or a cause, mm -hmm. or those type of things, uh, that is something that you help with, right? Mm -hmm. On your website. Mm -hmm. So how does somebody, you know, who might want to do that, I mean, it's, I, I wouldn't know where the heck to even start. Mm -hmm. How would somebody 
you know, start mm-hmm. and, and begin to do something mm-hmm. like that. Well, I tell people you need to start with an idea, mm-hmm. you know, like, what do you want to do? Mm-hmm. And you have to come up with, you know, that, that name, um, mm-hmm. you have to figure out who, what kind of support you need, like a board of directors, mm-hmm. who are those going to be those people that the, are going to support you. And help the only you. thing I would know is a nonprofit ID for yeah. accounting purposes. <laughs> exactly. And, that would be, and that's, but, but I, I take them through that first because I uh, want to make sure that it's a viable organization yep. or i can tell them you know we have about 500 of those here yeah they already yeah so instead of creating about, your own join that one you can right? yeah you yeah. can join that one they could be your fiscal agent you can be a program a part of it yeah so there's several things that you can do so i kind of just coach them through that to figure out that's what they want you know i have to make sure that they have the resources and time to do it because right. everybody wants to start a cause but yep. some people don't have the time and the resources to do it and they don't want to commit to it and they don't and want make to the sacrifices it, it's a lot of work and we got our nine to five right to be realistic so it's got to really make mm-hmm. some, mean something to you um but yeah. if you believe in it i say go for it because yeah. uh, if you truly truly believe in it you never know where it's going to lead you or the things that you know and one thing that comes to mind uh gabby chavez lopez <laughs> uh, she went to santa clara what up gabby she's Hi, in, gabby. in new Hi, mexico gabby. yes no way. Yeah. You know, how do you, know? <laughs> you know what? You know what's crazy is Gabby. I was at, I was washing my hands at the Hispanic ball. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Walked in the restroom. Uh, yes, in the yeah. restroom. And Gabby's probably laughing because she's just doing it. Yeah. And I'm washing my hands, and I swear that's Gabby's dad. But you know that awkward yeah. moment yeah. where you don't want to say and then be wrong. Yeah. Uh, we're just talking about you, like, Gabby. Uh, but you guys know each other. Yes. Mutual friends. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah. is that from the, her dad being? You know, actually, one of the awards me and her got the Lamb Award, the Activist of the Year Award. Did you see that one? Gabby got it, or her uh, father? She got the. She got the. Gabby, remind us what award you got that night. That's right. Start typing. Yes. <laughs> but yeah. the point being, mm-hmm. that's how you guys kind yeah. of met originally. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Yeah. wonderful. Um, you put a, a, a post on this, and I love, now I understand you're giving feedback mm-hmm. from the book. And it, yeah. if you're just joining us, we're with Chandra Lopez Mr. Brooks. Brooks, Mr. Mixer Brooks. Yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. talking about black, brown, and political. And speaking of the Brooks, <laughs> oh, wait, that's little, that's young Brooks. Yes. Just walked in. Uh, and Chapter one, I'm looking at it, sit at the table or be on the menu. And you were asking, what did that mean to you? You were trying to get feedback from the consumers. And I think yeah. Facebook is the biggest uh, focus group out there. So that's really cool that you did that. Yeah. And um, I'm trying to remember my interpretation, right? Cause I, of sit at the I, table I, or be on the menu. Yeah, uh-huh. is, you know, or, or you, so you can basically, you know, Come front, be you, full face forward, or just be an option is the way I looked at it. Mm-hmm. What, what did that kind of mean mm-hmm. to you for, as a tease, where I'm not, I don't, yeah. I haven't read chapter one. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's to, to, well, what that means is you can either be at the decision making tables mm-hmm. of those tables, whatever tables Got those it. are. Got it. Right? Could be city council. Yes, yes. Could yes. be the state assembly, mm-hmm. right? Or the senate. The quote unquote or, or power, school board, we call it. Or yep. school board. You could go local, neighborhood yep. association. You can, you can even go lower school. You know, all these different tables. Mm-hmm. You can be at that table or you can have those people making decisions for you. Or you. So you're yeah. on the menu. Love it. So uh, you sit on the table or be on the menu. That's probably the hardest thing is when you write a book like this. Like mm-hmm. you know, teachers always make us do our, our thesis and you <laughs> summarize it in one sentence. Yeah. What do you what do you think as an insight for people watching that um hey you should get this book because this is what it would give you. That, mm-hmm. That's not an easy question. It's so loaded mm-hmm. because how, how do you how do you keep it in one sentence? Right? Yeah, yeah. On um, why you should get a, get the book, right? What would it or be? What would it be to you? Just empowerment. Yeah, empowerment able... to own and understand how much power as individuals we do have mm-hmm. within local government. Mm-hmm. I think people feel so detached from it and mm-hmm. they don't understand it, so mm-hmm. they don't know the power they have to make that change. Yep. Um, to make the decisions, like if you sitting at the table at neighborhood association or on the school board. It's coming. Hi, son. Hi, Mom. You know What's your name, son? My name's Kasaya. Kasaya. Kasaya, say what's up. Pop your head in to Facebook. What up, Kasaya? Just got home from school. Say you, hi. Say hi. <laughs> you know we have two people? Yep. He did. Right when he came in, he wasn't shy. Oh, he did. <laughs> he wasn't shy at all. He, awesome, he's used Kasaya. to this. He's used to the live. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I cut you, you mm-hmm. off, though. No, I think mm-hmm. that's, that's huge. People, like, have a, a, a stigma to, you know... Uh, of, of actually getting involved or they'll, they'll they'll be quick to talk about politics and talk about our leaders and say mm-hmm. uh, hey they're um they're corrupt or blame mm-hmm. it on them blame it on our leaders right. but mm-hmm. when they have opportunities like 
uh, Ash's coffee and conversation, right, that he mm-hmm. had, or Magdalena putting themselves out there mm-hmm. and I sent them a message, told them how proud I am mm-hmm. for doing that. Mm-hmm. Often, then you see nobody show, shows up to any of these things, right? They're yeah. afraid to talk about those issues right. when our leaders are so accessible, you'd be surprised Surprise. yeah, how accessible they, they really are. Mm-hmm. So, um, so for, for you, mm-hmm. this is kind of, you know, a, a, a Bible towards how yeah. to utilize that and utilize that in the correct way. Yes, right? and making them understand it's not as hard as we think. Right. It's untouchable. Right. Because so many people come to me and say, Chandra, how do you know all these politicians? Or how do you do get this done? And how do you do this? How do you do that? Right. I'm like, it's easy. So instead of me constantly giving people advice, I put in a book. People have that stigma. As soon as I think politicians, they immediately think like corruption. They right? do, yeah. Isn't that Shady. bad? And yeah. I'm just being real. That's what I, I love to do, mm-hmm. you know, on, on this show. Mm-hmm. But don't realize this for every mm-hmm. one of those. Okay, thank God we're so good. Yeah. <laughs> is there's a, so there, there's so many good people out there. And yeah. I think, um, you know, I don't mean to keep dro- dropping uh, mm-hmm. Ash's name, but until I followed him on Instagram and, and followed him on Facebook. Yeah. And then the proof is in the pudding, right? Yeah. Of how. How I don't know if that's what it was for you, was. but I, I knew him through a lot of family members as mm-hmm. well. But I'm just like, man, he may, if you're watching this whole lot, you made me look tired. Uh, like, <laughs> I, I thought I covered so much in my businesses and so much ground. I was like, yeah. how does this guy do it? You got to really love what you do. And then yeah. what, what comes from that is just respect. Yes. Like, you know, that's what you, you're, you're truly doing. So, yeah, let's talk about we're talking offline about that. Mm-hmm post that intrigued me mm-hmm. uh the most mm-hmm. is um essentially uh the Facebook post was how to get you know let's say there's a certain cause that you really want to be for how to uh for mm-hmm. someone would go about really mm-hmm. making an impact mm-hmm. and difference and you talked about something with school that, that led you to that right um you mean about the specific post mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. Yep. um well I, I mean just in general like mm-hmm. if you really want to change just let's just say there's a, a light out mm-hmm. you know, like your street lights yes 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 I'm, or i'm that guy you constantly have speeders right coming yep. up your street you want to slow down. what can you do about it right. right some people feel powerless or they'll just complain and be like oh this dang city and the mayor needs to do this and the mayor and actually it's not the mayor so I'm, even I'm if you went and yelled at the mayor mm-hmm. <laughs> mayor's not going to fix it for you you have to figure out how to get that done right, right? so yeah. you have to know what commission meeting to go to mm-hmm. to voice your your opinion you have to know who your city council member is in that district and mm-hmm. call their office and say hey we need a speed bump on my street yeah. and they will direct you to the person who you need to talk to and you they can really are get it done. there for you by the way yes you're already paying them and i was always that guy mm-hmm. and looking back <laughs> the last thing i would say roman are, are you trying to run for something you're always in the politics i don't know how this led me here yeah right but then i keep seeing these like-minded people who think the same way i do right mm-hmm. but again it was just a lack of of education on my part that kind of had that stigma of, of kind of thinking of the way some people do now they go ah mm-hmm. oh, boring mm-hmm. politics mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. i would when c-span would come on mm-hmm. i would like fall asleep but knowing that these are things that affect you mm-hmm. and every night for bed i'm watching trey gowdy and all these different mm-hmm. people and my wife's like what's gotten <laughs> into you you know but back back to the street yeah. light mm-hmm. um people don't notice right off the bat I walk up, we're in county jurisdiction, and I see, okay, there's a number on each street line mm-hmm. pull, and there's an exact department with that phone number. Mm-hmm. None of my neighbors will do it or care. They'll just complain about it. And if you're worried about, you know, less light, more mm-hmm. crime, mm-hmm. Uh, more light, mm-hmm. less crime, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. That's been yeah. proven. Mm-hmm. Just one little a phone call and they came the next day and they replaced it not not with just one of those orange lights but one of those led mm-hmm. lights mm-hmm. and then i'm driving i just feel proud like you know mm-hmm. what my neighbors don't know they're probably gonna think like oh great the county probably did that i had to be proactive and do that but yeah. you, you made a difference for yeah. everybody else mm-hmm. you know? mm-hmm. and exactly um, and it's not as hard as people think right right and sometimes it does take some time sometimes it doesn't happen right away but if you advocate, 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 you know exactly who to go to and how to how to navigate that, then right. it's easier. Right. Mm-hmm. I want to shift into a socialpreneur. Mm-hmm. What up, Rachel? Um, uh, socialpreneur. What, yeah. what, the, what the heck does that mean? <laughs> I, I can never spell the preneur part. That's the part I always mess up with smell oh, check. Oh, I have a story. I, I have a story about that. I love that you did that second half so I could, you could break it in the syllables <laughs> right. for me. But talk to us about that. Uh, actually, when I first started it, I had it spelled wrong, like on my website and everything. I had to change. <laughs> I was like, I, I automatically thought it was U-E-R. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, and it just comes that way to me. But 
Anyway, that's I just added Grammarly. We'll talk about that. Yeah. Like Chrome browser <laughs> saved my life. Yeah, right. Um, but it, you know, I've always felt I had an entrepreneur inside of me. Like I always would, young, growing up, high school, um, and although I wasn't the best student in school, I always would be interested in who owned, mm -hmm. like that restaurant I'd go to or that store. I want to mm -hmm. know who the own owner was, right. like how they did it and right. how they became the owner. Right. Like that always intrigued me. Yeah, Asian, Asian community is huge on that. It's yeah, small business. Yeah, right. And I've jobs. always felt like I had an entrepreneur inside of me. Mm -hmm. I just didn't move forward. I was a visionary. Always had ideas, mm -hmm. and I just would never move on them. I don't, you know, you, mm -hmm. you just because you get stuck in right. in in going to work, mm -hmm. getting a really good job, mm -hmm. and then you get comfortable. Mm -hmm. And then this year, well, this past year mm -hmm. in 2016, the end of 2016, I had jaw surgery, and I was like, okay, Chandra, what are you gonna do? Mm -hmm. You're gonna either get get ready to run for office, mm -hmm. or you're gonna start this business right, right. You know? and I decided to start the business and write the book because I felt that I could run for office and affect both? locally yeah, yeah. but if I can do <laughs> <laughs> this is the TV you're not gonna no that's about her oh that's, her. that's my mother-in-law okay she okay very loud. she's awesome yeah she's yeah, awesome. yeah she is awesome but I, I told you um, but you want to take the dive on uh on that first, yeah so I so burn. yeah and the book because I felt like I could reach more people that way across the country with the book and educating about local politics and getting involved rather than just run for office and be stressed out and then, you know, like away from home all the time right, right now, yep. maybe later I'll run, but this was something that came to my heart and I felt like I needed to do. Mm -hmm. So it was combining my community. Mm -hmm. So social, the right. social work that I've been doing in the community right. and, and blending it with the entrepreneur spirit that I had inside of me. I love that. I love that. So, and, and then for, yeah. for women too, it yeah. lets them know, where to start mm -hmm. and, and you talked about kind of the business side of, of like not not just be a leader socially but within uh your company right mm -hmm. you might be at work or where you're at how to move uh, up how up to move the up mm -hmm. could you touch on that mm -hmm. a little bit mm -hmm. uh, yeah i i've just noticed as a woman um you really have to kind of fight for it sometimes yeah. and yeah. it the way I kind of did it, even though I didn't know the strategy at the time, I didn't mm -hmm. realize what I was doing. But every organization, I've always, if I didn't come to, at the top, I'd work my way up the top really fast mm -hmm. um, because I had the leadership qualities and I kind of identified. I can see what the, the, the CEO was looking for mm -hmm. and I'd pay attention to that yep. and I'd be really, I'd get really good at that. And right? understanding um, the organizational structure yes. of and I feel like yeah. for any women who are listening mm -hmm. that's the same that goes uh, when you understand what we talked about right on the political side of things mm -hmm. okay people don't even know that there is a council that they're broken up into districts mm -hmm. that whole format is going to be played um, in Rachel's uh, she's a teacher mm -hmm. in South San Francisco mm -hmm. she has to understand that there's a board of trustees mm -hmm. on top of the PTA on top of the superintendent and mm -hmm. his things but a lot of those teachers yeah. will be very concerned about what's going on you know within the process mm -hmm. but how many meetings the superintendent will actually be at right? Yeah, right. Um, because what happens and it's really sad is they're like mm -hmm. well if I start being around these big lead decision maker leaders that's going to affect me and I don't want to lose my job. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get, if you're within your rights and you know, you know, mm -hmm. we're not all uh, uh, attorneys, but there's nothing wrong with it. I think that the pros definitely outweigh mm -hmm. the cons. Mm -hmm. I've had so many teachers, you know, mm -hmm. who've been afraid to be on this show like this because they're afraid of the social media policy or something yeah. you know, at their school right. or they're so worried about putting food Saying on the table. Wrong, yeah. And I tell them that, listen, not only will I go talk to your principal, go talk to the mm -hmm. superintendent, which, <laughs> I've had, yeah. uh, and they'll, and they're such great speakers, and they made such a difference. Mm -hmm. But they'll be living in that fear instead of understanding that it's really more in their job security. Yeah. By being, in, would you agree? Right. Yeah. Showing face, knowing people, and I feel like the best thing, you know, worst thing you could do is stay silent and be another face. Mm -hmm. If any decision maker is trying to take advantage of you, that would be the easiest way, mm -hmm. right? For mm -hmm. him to, to try to feel like you're being severe. But yeah, um, the same thing goes for as far as uh, women in business. Mm -hmm. You kind of touch, touch on that a little bit on, on, on the book, right? Of yeah. How to understand your organization. Well, I don't, not in, not in the book, but in my business. In yeah. your business. Yeah, yeah. in my well, business. Well, for any woman that's listening, what would be one piece of advice you might keep to trying to move up out? There in here. Trying to move up or yeah, start a business? Trying to move, move up. Uh, uh, start a business. You're, it's going to be tough no matter what. <laughs> yeah. That would be persistence. Of the advice of that yeah, one. yeah, yeah. Um, so a woman that wants to move up, I think you really have to um, identify your strengths. 
and like we said, double down on your strengths. What it. are you really good at? I love it. And that's what you need to shine in. Yep. Right? That's what you need to shine in. And nice. if that organization isn't for you, right, that might, organization might not be for you. And then you'll mm -hmm. really figure out, maybe I shouldn't be here. Maybe I need to go find my passion. Right. So what I, what I really tell women is you need to know that that's really what you want. You have to love what you do. You have to be able to wake up and want to get up and go to work, go okay. to the office or your business or whatever. You can't, if you feel, if you're like, I don't want Monday to come and mm. you are dragging Monday Some, morning. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Yeah. So that's one. Yep. You shouldn't work there anymore. Yep. You need to find another job. <laughs> right. Or start your business or work on your passion, whatever. Right. But you should be doing something you love and something you're passionate about. And then they might. So easy for you to say, Roman. Easy for you to say, Sean. But I got bills. I got this. Yeah. But the thing is, at the end of the day, it's kind of we want the comfort, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to kind of, I guess, essentially get comfortable being Un uncomfortable right? yeah i've yes. heard, heard that from a lot of people and kind mm -hmm. of taking that leap of faith of mm -hmm. course it's not going to be easy at first but um mm -hmm. what's crazy to me is when i started to do, uh, do that you'll see the creativity the hunger in mm -hmm. your stomach it's like on another level when you finally feel you're on the right path mm -hmm. versus you play it safe you mm -hmm. stay where you are you're not gonna you know yeah you get uh, comfortable yeah get where you want to to be um in that in that way but. and then you then and then you just have a, a, a bunch of regrets as you get older a bunch of regrets and why should we regret i know i've met so many people that have gotten older and they just regret that they didn't take action on something right they didn't do anything about right. their vision or their idea right you know they just sit on it and yep. say oh i don't have the money to do it i don't have this to do it but i really encourage people to take a chance yep. you have to take a chance and follow your gut I agree completely. Mm -hmm. And Sean and I love Gary V, and he says the the same thing. He says, you know what? Go to a senior home. Go to a retirement home mm -hmm. and just go talk to those people yeah. and ask them, what is your what is your greatest regret looking back, mm -hmm. right? What mm -hmm. do you wish you did? Um, and they all say the same, that I wish I took those risks, mm -hmm. right? I mm -hmm. wish I would have done so, something in that way to actually not be stagnant and be stuck where I am. Mr. Mr. Brooks, say, yeah, he's, say hello. Okay. So you can come okay, in here. Yeah. He's probably hesitating. It's all good. Mr. Brooks, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and then I'm, I'm going through the chapters mm -hmm. here in this mm -hmm. book, but I'm going to skip all the way to seven that I love was uh, run, woman, run. <laughs> run, women, yeah. run. Yes. Uh, if you could give us kind of a, a highlight, um, mm -hmm. what does that uh, touch upon? Again, if you're just joining us, we got Chandra Lopez Brooks' uh, new book she's got coming out. It's called Black, Brown, and Political. That light is so bright. <laughs> we'll put the link in the comments. Yes, yes. We'll, we'll do that. Mr. Brooks, how are you, sir? <laughs> Good to see you. We met a few times. What's up? Yes, yes, we are. We're, we're live. We're live right now. Talk about Mrs. Brooks' book uh, and a few <laughs> other things. Uh, Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah they go. <laughs> but uh, run, women, run. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, if you can give the women out there who are listening a little insight to mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. that so, in your mind? Um, I've been to a program called Emerge California. So it's a political training program for women. Mm -hmm. um, so it's for women that want to run for political office. So okay. I did it two years ago, graduated. And um, it's amazing how many... I mean, how many, how much of how many of us are not running for office because we right. are hesitant and we feel like it's a man's world, politics is a man's world, and we we're you know we're usually are in the background and you know we're the ones supporting the husband running for office and or whatnot or the significant other, right. um, but not many women run. And when I learned a statistic in that in that program is that women have to be asked about seven times to run for office, mm. where a man. You tell him one time, and he's like, oh, I could do it. <laughs> and they go and do it. Because well, of that masculinity. Yeah, exactly, that. exactly. But for women, we have to be like, you should run. You should run. You, until we, at the seventh time before we say, maybe I should run. Yep. Enough so we don't have, that. Yeah, so we don't have that confidence. By the way, that comes back to strengths. Another thing is, they say when you have enough people coming up to you saying mm -hmm. something like you should run you mm -hmm. should run there's something to think about with mm -hmm. that right it's funny with our strength usually we roll our eyes like yeah mm -hmm. they must say that to everybody but right. when you hear it more than once and whatever it is mm -hmm. not just politics right. that that's a sign right mm -hmm. there in mm -hmm. my opinion of something you should do yeah. you know in, in the near future i love that you're taking this it's a marathon it's not a race you're taking this mm -hmm. first chapter and then you could always do that later right yeah because i've gotten that same question mm -hmm. a lot uh, 
why are you doing all this, these interviews with the, these politicians. politicians and stuff like that? And number one is really because it's a real change, right? Yeah. Everybody mm-hmm. talks and complains about a change, mm-hmm. but this is one of those ways. And if there's any leaders, you know, I can think of, it was always, I was obsessed with JFK and mm-hmm. LK. Um, and I think we touched on that uh, before, mm-hmm. which is kind of leads to the book of how to bring that inner out of you. Yeah. And here's the other thing. Mm-hmm. It was like, why should I? care nobody cares about any of this until it affects them personally right right? or a family member yes then all of a sudden they get behind um, you know a a cause right or something but Mm -hmm. going back to emerge Mm -hmm. you said you graduated Mm -hmm. it's something that women can actually yeah yeah emerge california i did an interview on it on my facebook too um and they just um did the interviews for them i went and interviewed some women for the program for this year okay um and it's just amazing they have just an influx of women joining because of the whole political scene right now what's going on in the world a lot of women are interested in running so yeah so it's every year yeah it's a six-month program Mm -hmm. and you get trained in how to run a campaign how to raise money Mm -hmm. how to handle yourself in the media Mm -hmm. how to deal with your mess like if you have anything in your background you got to be able to deal with it if you're thinking about running for office and all these little things um, you know to to get ready um yeah, you know, just to be, to be transparent on that, mm-hmm. that's probably everybody's number one uh, concern. I know you kind of touched upon if you can give some people some type of value, some type of sneak peek on some of the ideas that come with, uh, for those things, they don't have enough money is always mm-hmm. the, the issue, right? Mm-hmm. How would somebody, even if it's not for office, but you mentioned these apply to a cause or a nonprofit commission or, uh, yeah, or a commission, mm-hmm. uh, how would you suggest, uh, where do they start as far as, you know, how to raise uh, money mm-hmm. for these type of things. Well, you got to think about your network. Okay. That that's one thing you got to do, and this is what I tell people. Your network is your net worth. Net worth, exactly. Say, right? <laughs> right. So you got to think about your network. Who are the people in my circle? You know, you really have to make a list. Right. And when I talk to people that are running for office, it's like make your list of people that are influencers and people that you know have money. Your database. Yeah. Yeah. You got to really make that list because sometimes you don't realize you don't know. You be like, oh yeah, I got I know so and so, and they own this or they own this, and and maybe they can help me raise money or they right. can have an event at their house and right. they can invite all these people. They they know other people that know other people. And a lot of times you know much more people than you realize, right? Right. Yeah. So you sit down and actually. Make a list write that down make, yeah. yeah you really have to make a list and figure that out and like if you have no connections mm-hmm. then you really need to consider not running <laughs> or, while. or being, make or being really rich to begin with yeah <laughs> that's that's one thing I, I everyone who's pushed me towards it i'm yeah. like well let me focus on, on real estate and then you know the the campaign budget won't be an issue right yeah and, exactly. and these are really raw real things that whatever's you know nobody wants to talk about but these are all realistic things and they apply to if you have a cause or an organization not just politics right but, but, uh, let, yeah. let, let's say for example somebody keeps popping into my mind mm-hmm. is uh, uh jamie and she'll eventually come across this and mm-hmm. you've seen how hard she's been advocating for for, for puerto rico right mm-hmm. what's been going on mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and props to her for actually you know pushing the initiatives forward and then mm-hmm. until boom she's actually there mm-hmm. right now in mm-hmm. puerto rico which of course is just gonna probably build her hunger even more on mm-hmm. what's really going mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. But what she's doing is, you know, we forget about it after a week, right? Yeah. These days, right. we're so spoiled here in America. Yeah. But she's talking. documenting the process. Mm-hmm. And when you see a grown man breaking down because she gave four bottles of water mm-hmm. to him, right? That really hits you that, man, this is a, a serious stuff. Yeah, man. yeah. And you feel that, you know, and you can check this out in mm-hmm. her book, that mm-hmm. some of these principles still apply if you want to give on uh, a cause like this, mm-hmm. it would start from advocating. Right? Yeah, uh, yeah. If you want to run for office, you got to show the work. Right. You got to show that you've done something in the community. Build that. You have to build that foundation. Right. Right. Because, but honestly, like I just want to go back to what you're saying sure, about sure. the money. Yep. You you could you could be rich and look look who we have in office, right? Because that money got them there. A lot of right. that money got them there, and a lot that many friends. <laughs> and a lot Maybe. and a lot of. Um, senators and, and and these people that are in these powerful positions, they got there because they had the pockets. The to campaign get there, support, yeah. right? They had the campaign support and they have the funding to get there. That's common trait. Um, so see, absolutely. That, that's why in my book I talk about it too. Is is getting black and brown people active is because we need to start putting money behind 
candidates that we support. And let them know that they can do it without the money. Yeah. Right? No, but that, let, tell, well, Cesar Chav, <laughs> tell Cesar Chavez that he's got to be super rich in order to make a change, right? But they but find no, a way. But they, you can do it, but yeah. you have, but he, you need the people behind you. That's right. why I'm telling the people that aren't involved in politics at all, you need to at least right. get, yeah. donate. Yeah. If you're not going to be walking precincts, mm -hmm. if you're not going to be supporting in that way, you need to give money mm -hmm. because they need the money. Mm -hmm. We don't, a lot of us don't have the money to put in a hundred thousand dollars into our campaign budget. Right. So we need people to get behind us. How do you so do if that? we don't have people to get yeah. behind us, yeah. then how are we going to win? And how are we going to sit at the table in order to represent us? Right. We right. can't get there unless we have the money. The yes. money is a huge deal in politics. Right. You have to have a certain amount of money, right. especially depending on the office that you're running for. Got it. So, and the, the way I say that you do that is that you've got to encourage people to get involved, understand the importance of that. Right. We don't do that. A lot of people, a lot like the Republican, and I, you know, I don't know your audience, but <laughs> I'm yeah. nothing against no. Republicans. You know, I, I have some great Republicans. I, I want friends. you to be transparent. <laughs> yeah. And, and again, uh, you know, you'll see that I've had uh, Mr. Comas, right, left, yeah. middle, blue, okay, green, good. monkey, reptile. Yeah. And one thing I talk about with him is the idea of us as humans, the fact that we want to, you know, they want us to associate with something, right? Mm -hmm. Your yeah. team red or yeah, your or team, team blue, blue. Mm -hmm. your team donkey. Mm -hmm. well, literally, I feel like there's consumer behavior to it. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I'm a Raider fan, you're mm -hmm. a Niner fan, right? Yeah. We want to be a part of something and associate something mm -hmm. really that divides us, but it's 100% you know, true that I can have right mm -hmm. you know, views on one subject and have left views on another subject, yeah. And what do you call me then, right? Probably <laughs> an independent, or right. that's that's how um, yeah. I, I see myself. But, but what, but I was what were you going that, into that, that, that with? That the Republicans do that. They right. prepare. They prepare candidates from school board, even from high school. Right. They are preparing them. They're getting behind them. They're starting to figure out the strategy on preparing these candidates to run for office. Right. And then they know who's going to fund this campaign. It's strategic. Mm -hmm. Okay? We need to start being strategic like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Like figuring out who are those leaders. Right. You know, like who identifying people like us, you know, and getting people behind us mm -hmm. that are going to prepare us to get to that point where we run for office. I think it's it's so important that, you know, people might be yawning or saying politics, but again, mm -hmm. the, that product's different, but the principles are the same, mm -hmm. and that translates to Colton who's in the Air Force. Uh, he's going to have a hierarchy, mm -hmm. right? It, mm -hmm. Until he retires and he actually hops in, uh, you know, his own private commercial airplane, there's going to be an organizational structure. Mm -hmm. And for us to say there's no politics within the organization, mm -hmm. we all say it, right? Yeah. It's definitely there. And that name is so yeah. overloaded, but mm -hmm. really, I feel it's life, mm -hmm. right? There's always going to be those things where you don't have to be emotional. You don't have to be mean. But even in the Subway franchise world, ask any <laughs> franchisees if there's a there's politics to, you know, when a location's going to another location. But mm -hmm. knowing how to have those crucial conversations, yeah. talk to them in a right way. And there's going to be times where talking doesn't work. So, you know. Um, call them a rat or a snitch, but you have no choice but to go above the chain and know that there is something always mm -hmm. above the chain. But some people, they feel helpless because mm -hmm. they think there's nothing they can do when there's always documents somewhere written. So mm -hmm. by somebody understanding something like black, brown, and political, it doesn't mm -hmm. just apply to somebody, you know, in my opinion, who wants to run for office. I think it no. applies to women in leadership. It applies to organizations. It applies to AKA sense. life. Yeah. Right, and that's yeah. why that is so important. In a weird I wrote way, this for the non-political, honestly. Right, right, right. and I saw that. I, yeah, that's why I, I want to make sure that that these yeah. people um, know that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we tend to get away from those life skills or act like it doesn't exist or sh just play your role. Mm -hmm. Don't start any trouble. Yeah, right? the it's, it's not feathers. trouble, right? We're mm -hmm. all talking about it. Mother, why can't we be transparent about this? And how do we? do this in a, a diplomatic mm -hmm. way and, mm -hmm. and, and that's why protocols and, and things are put in place because the people know situations like mm -hmm. this come up right? yeah. mm -hmm. um, and understanding mm -hmm. that but then if you're in North Korea go and throw this book out the window <laughs> there's there's no hope for you it's a it's a wow see right there, why it always comes back to policy yeah uh, we're in a perfect um, mm -hmm. segue mm -hmm. to that mm -hmm. what, what did you mean by that it always comes back to that paper yeah because I, I not money piece of paper yeah, yeah. <laughs> right uh, because I come from the nonprofit community world right um, and that's kind of how I got into politics is because 
I, I was a nonprofit and to, and you know, I, we were always taking care of something temporarily, right? We're giving support to help you pay for childcare or we're, we're giving you a meal for the day mm. or we're giving you some clothes for the week or for your children. But how are we going to fix that to make sure that family is self-sufficient, mm. right? How are we going to make sure that that family can afford childcare and not have to come to our agency to get um, support for childcare services? Right. How, you know, how are we going to fix these socioeconomic issues? Mm -hmm. Because that's why they're here. Yeah. That's why they're coming for services to the nonprofit. Mm. So what I'm saying is that it all comes back to policy because we have to go back and figure out why can't they afford it because they can't afford to live here. So they have to give some of that money. I mean, that, that they have to put all their money towards rent because it's so expensive here in Silicon Valley. Mm. They can't afford to, to buy extra clothes or pay for child care services. Yeah. So we gotta, you got to work on that policy. Right. So you got to be questioning city council, the mayor. What's up with this housing issue? How come it's so expensive in Silicon Valley? What are you guys going to do about it? Mm -hmm. So you got to advocate. That's why it's so important to go to these meetings, mm -hmm. these meetings to talk about it mm -hmm. and voice your opinion. Because right. the more power we have and, and then you're setting up meetings, you're calling that city council member or the mayor and you're blowing up their phone. And the more people we have, the better. Yep. The problem, the problem why we can't move things forward mm -hmm. is that we don't have enough people helping. All right. We don't have enough people flooding City Hall, mm -hmm. knocking on the door of the mayor, you know, mm -hmm. like calling and, and bugging and figuring out how can we advocate. There's just not enough. There's a small group of people fighting all the time. It's the same people. Right. We don't have enough people. So that's why I want people to understand that. Yep. It's like you could continue to go serve meals and, and do this, which is great. And I'm not downing that at all. But in the end, it comes down to policy of those people that we're serving. Mm -hmm. And, why and, and you'll, be, you'll be blown away that, you know, you know, just rallying together your 10 or more, how much, manipulate is not the right word, but how much you can push uh, a council to make a certain decision on a certain issue based on how much noise is actually, mm -hmm. you know, going on in City Hall on that issue because in yeah. their minds, they're there for the people, right? Yeah. And that is for positive causes mm -hmm. and for you negative, corrupt, bad people out there. It can be used <laughs> for negative causes. Mm -hmm. It's funny because when you have um, a, de a development project, mm -hmm. and I read a, a book kind of on land use and so forth, mm -hmm. and there's attorneys that write this book and they're giving strategies where they would actually, you know, and this sounds bad, but hey, value, uh, mm -hmm. that they would literally rally people or get a group uh, together that when they want to overturn something or seem overwhelming mm -hmm. on something, get those people together and have them show up to the actual meetings and make noises and wear pins mm -hmm. and wear shirts. And again, we got to remember these things, there's people out there who do this for the positive. Yeah. There's people out there, do, do, out there who do that for the negative, straight up higher actors. You know how big their pockets are, right? Yeah. You think how do you sit at City yes, Hall Yes. And, and how do you defeat that is, well, the, uh, the cause is mm -hmm. important you're they're gonna get outdone by people who are there on the good side right right yeah. uh, let's 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 hope that there's people on the good side because if they're not guess what when you're wondering why they those win. those things they're, they're gonna win so mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. you know that's mm -hmm. that's one insight where right. when i saw that post mm -hmm. i was like okay am i are you are you thinking like one side of when you want to get a project done are you thinking of the humanitarian side when you want to get the humanitarian the mm -hmm. the, the, the principles are the same yeah right mm -hmm. and that's what's uh so important and that's why it's important to be transparent and you know we have no excuses these days how accessible information is and stuff right. think about mm -hmm. how C C caesar had it caesar chavez had it mm -hmm. and how we have it. you think he'd be going facebook live <laughs> first time I, I sat down and my rants to ash was like you know well, what can we do on social media and i'm like we need to be utilizing this more right yes um yeah. and he's like well i'm great on social media i'm like okay well let's still try this and try that and yeah. I, I agree with him the one thing that will never be replaced is what he works so hard on he walks miles and miles and he face straight up face. knocks on yeah. doors mm -hmm. and by doing that i think no technology will ever beat that i yeah. agree with you on that yeah. um and that's what's most important i think uh to do but my whole point was when you look back at his times if you were a guy like him and how helpless did those people feel, right? Yeah. I got so much family in Bakersfield and Delano mm -hmm. and uh, uncle of mine who was, who was, uh, you know, worked in his office making phone calls and stuff. Mm -hmm. How helpless did they feel when all those farmers against them? So what did they do? They had to go back to grassroots. Yeah. They had to be organized in that way. They had to organize. Um, 
and, and again, that that's what's so cool to me. And that's why, mm -hmm. you know, the more I, I looked into um, and got to know Mrs. Brooks, I, I was like, man, we, we gotta we gotta sit down <laughs> and, and have uh, have you on. Anything uh, else you want to say? Because I know it felt like ten seconds, but watch this. We're going on like forty five minutes. <laughs> oh wow! Uh, yeah. I'm telling you, it flies it's a by. Um, yeah. If I had to put you on the the spot, your elevator, we're in an elevator pitch, and somebody out there is, why the heck? Why should I read this book, Chandra? Why why should I care? If you had to give it in a quick elevator pitch mm -hmm. uh, what would it be why, why should Rachel care as a teacher uh, well what I tell everybody is that politics has to do with everything politics has to do with everything and it could come from your makeup it could your house your car the gas right gas prices just went up I saw that. today yeah, yeah I saw that. <laughs> that politics has to do with everything and we don't understand that and this is why we need to care we need to care because it affects us every day, and local politics affects us every day. That's why I'm doing my series, Eight Days to the Launch of My Book, mm -hmm. is talk, making local politics sexy. Because it's mm -hmm. not, right? Yep, yep, it's yep, not. Yep. People don't care. People care about Trump and what he's tweeting. We need to care Such about... Such a misconception. Yeah. We need to care about what's going on locally. It need, we need to know that. And that's what I, I, I tell people because local politics affects you sooner and faster. So you need to care about that. Right. And that's what I te would tell the audience. I think that was great. And you're much more powerful than you realize yes. to bring change. Um, and it affects you every day. Mm -hmm. The reason my mind goes a, a mile a minute, but I wrote down uh, HOA. We love complaining about the mm -hmm. problem, but understanding the structure of it is I had a random family um, talk about how there's this neighbor who's on the HOA board but it's kind of bullying them in a way where mm -hmm. they just change carpet to uh wood and you know is i'm on the hoa board you're not supposed to do that and got them in huge trouble when you're anywhere and they were stressing out so much about it and talking to me about it yeah and i'm like well a i guess probably a douche if you've already tried talking to them <laughs> right. but what can you do you can complain and go to the next meeting you can you mm -hmm. bring it up people you can make an amendment to that HOA yes. association yes. to allow wood for everybody, especially if you have a reasonable enough um, argument Arguments. for it. Yeah. And and what do you have to lose, you know? Exactly. But it, it, if you say it doesn't affect you, that's one example. Example number two, I have another buddy who's mm -hmm. moving up in the organization mm -hmm. and um, of a big uh, company mm -hmm. brand of, you know, there are certain, let's say they're a shopping brand mm -hmm. name, but he's like, oh no, I have to do this because I have a new boss and I'm just, you know, I'm freaking out because this boss is a lot crazier. I don't know how to deal with them. You know, I, I'm, I'm in fear kind of mm -hmm. for my job is I say, you know, be, not, be nice to everyone, mm -hmm. do everything the right way. Mm -hmm. But by the way, know that maybe it's something you don't know. There's got to be a book that he abides by or policy within that program mm -hmm. and just know that you understand it in and out mm -hmm. not that it things something bad is going to happen but push comes to shove you're already doing preventative maintenance in your mind on mm -hmm. who you got to go to right yeah what kind of they might have a department of where they won't call you out or tell them who made the complaint or whatever mm -hmm. but if something really bad has happened around you with that boss right that you can there's an avenue for you to use right. that. But, you can, you can uh, speak your mind but, your it, voice. but again, mm -hmm. that kind of goes with your chap chapter two of understand, uh, not chapter two, was, uh, chapter four it was easy to understand local government structure. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of uh, mm -hmm. universal mm -hmm. to that. But, yeah, right. But uh, anything else you want to say, Shana, you're, you're awesome too, by the way. Thank you for like a last minute having this <laughs> it's talk. It's okay. And, uh, thank uh, you. I think with, with any seminar, with anything, if there's like one three-second piece that you took away that was like, huh, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. I think that was worth it, right? Yes, it was very worth it. I appreciate it. That, and and I, I just want people to, you know, I, what, I, what I want people to do is buy this book for young people too, mm. like college, high school level, to read this book. Mm. Just so they have that foundation. Mm -hmm. Before they get into their career, they know that they have the power. Right. You buy this book for them to empower them, put it in their stocking for Christmas, whatever. But it, you know, it's it, it's something you're giving them a gift because you're empowering them. Mm -hmm. They won't they won't like it, I'm sure at first. But I think it's something that we need to do for the young people. That's why I, I get so excited because I got a school in Georgia that just purchased some books, and oh, nice. it's exciting that they're gonna right. they're gonna do that. And I want to talk to them on how once they read this, what you can do with 
all that information. Right. So we got to empower our kids and give them that. And this is not just for black and brown people, even though that's my target. Yeah. This information is for anybody. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I wish we could like just dump the, no, not, not on your book, but in general, <laughs> uh, um, the word politics is immediately just a loaded st stigma, yeah. but I feel that don't think of it that way. Think of it of social structure, right? Mm -hmm. We're social human beings. Mm -hmm. Then there's always going to be a structure and a hierarchy to that. And there's monkeys out in the jungle right now mm -hmm. that have protocol going on. So, and we're obviously becoming more and more social, right? Mm -hmm. With this, we're Facebook live with this social media. So, yep. um, I want to say, Thank you, Thank Michelle you. Lopez Brooks. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Appreciate you. And please, uh, when is this going to drop in uh, November? November 8th. November 8th, next week, next Wednesday is the official. It, it's already out on pre order. Um, we'll drop the link in the comments mm. if people want to look at it. There's a sample of, mm. of it, of the book, so you can read a little bit before you think about purchasing it. But um, we'll provide that information and mm. the background and some information about me. And for, and for you teachers out there, anybody who's yeah. in a position uh, of power, you heard it. She cares more that it's given to, you know, these classrooms and our, our youth. If you mm -hmm. have any uh, leeway with mm -hmm. budget, which, again, another thing, God knows, we're getting cut left and right with our superintendents. Mm -hmm. uh, what are they going to do? they got to advocate to get things back, right? Or we're all going to private school. It's, actually, it's endless. <laughs> it's everywhere. We just don't see it. You actually, know? Roman, I just want to say that yeah. I, I want to gift this to a classroom, to a oh, okay, classroom on the east side, east side school district that, that I graduated from. Got it. I would love to um, gift it to anybody interested that wants to reach out, a teacher, an educator, yep. giving the opportunity right now because it's something I was going to do anyway. But if we have any educators in the East Side School District. First one to DM uh, me. Yes, the first one to uh, private <laughs> message me. <laughs> I'm going to, uh, we'll work with you to to get a copy of these books and come and talk about it. In you know, Rachel. She's I'm a, open she's for fish. that. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, thank you guys for, for those who tuned in. Mm -hmm. We'll do the usual with this. And then thank you, uh, Mrs. Brooks. It's a pleasure having you on there. Thank you, Roman. Take I appreciate care. it. Thank you. Take care, guys. Bye.